Jamaica is the largest island in the Commonwealth Caribbean with an area of 10,991 square kilometers and a population of 2.7 million. Jamaica is said to have the most churches per capita of any country in the world. To the northwest of Jamaica lies the Cayman Islands, with 45,436 persons living on 260 square kilometers or 100 square miles. St. George's is the only Anglican church in Cayman. It boasts a vibrant community with one of the best preschools in the Cayman Islands. In the beginning, there was the Church of England, which was established in Jamaica to encourage ministers that Christianity and the Protestant religion might have due reverence and exercise. Today, the diocese has 306 churches, led by the Lord Bishop of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, the Right Reverend Dr. Alfred Reed, and suffragan bishops, the Right Reverend Dr. Howard Gregory, the Right Reverend Dr. Harold Daniel, and the Right Reverend Dr. Robert Thompson. When I think of the diocese, what inspires me is how the diocese dealt with the disestablishment and this endowment in 1870. When Sir John Peter Grant decided to notify the bishop with very short notice, the church had been the state church from 1664 and the clergy were paid by the government. The buildings were maintained by a public works department. Our members were not accustomed to be self-supporting. And so the church was disestablished and disendowed. Disestablished with immediate effect and disendowed gradually in the sense that the clergy who were then employed would continue to receive their stipends as long as they remained where they were. If they moved, or if a new clergy came in, we would have to find a means of supporting them. And the prediction at the time was that this church would have died. How would you survive? You have, you've had no tradition of, of the kind of self-support. And I think the miracle happened, that that was when the church came to life. arose, became self-supporting and self-sustaining. It gets no budgetary support from anywhere outside of what its own members give in Jamaica today. But under normal running expenses, we pay our way and we have been doing so in spite of the fact that we were supposed to have died when we were disestablished and disendowed. And I'm very proud of that, and I think it is an inspiration even to the younger generation of clergy coming up. We have a tradition of independence in this country long before the country became independent. Um, we underestimate the educational contribution of the church because right now we have about 214 primary schools and 11 high schools. But it's not always remembered that in addition to those 11, the traditional trust schools, I speak of schools like JC, Woolmers, especially Woolmers. Woolmers has a special place in the diocese. Of course. You know that Woolmers is where the first synod of the diocese was held? No, I did not. The first synod in 1870 held at Woolmers. Because, you know, it, Woolmers actually came about as a, from, from as a result of a benefaction by John Woolmer, who was a member of the Kingston Parish Church. And there is a 
part in Lot beside the Kingston Parish Church, known as Old Old Mas Yard, which is where Old Mas used to be. Um, people like Monroe, Hampton, uh, Mannings, which are not counted as Anglican schools today, but they were actually founded by Anglican laymen. The, the founders of, of what is now San Diego High School, for instance, made it very explicit that these schools were founded to teach the doctrine of the Church of England. church also has been the repository of our cultural heritage. Um, not many people realize, you know, the, the Royal Academy in London was started by three people, including two artists whose works are popular in Jamaica, were popular in Jamaica at the time, um, John Bacon and Henry Westmacott. Now, if you were to draw a line around Spanish Town, Kingston, and Port Royal, you will find more Bacon sculptures than anywhere else in the world except in the Royal Academy itself. Port Royal, on the southeastern tip of the island, is one of a number of important national heritage sites in Jamaica. Once a haven for buccaneers and pirates, the quiet peace that is now Port Royal belies its stormy past. At the center of this sleepy fishing village is the historic St. Peter's Church. The Reverend Leslie Hosang shares a little of its history, art, and artifacts with us. This key was said to be the original key for the original church that was built here to open the front door of St. Peter's Church, Port Royal. As you can see, it's an extraordinarily large key made of solid um, steel. These four pieces of silverware were given to the church by Sir Henry Morgan after one of his um, pilgrimages through the Caribbean, uh, chief of which I believe it was said to be in Panama. And from Panama, he brought all these pieces of silverware, sterling silver, and um, we tried to price them at one time, but we were told that they were priceless, and we treasure them very much. These pieces of silverware are all used during our communion service each Sunday. As we leave Port Royal, we go across the island to the deanery of St. Mary, where we find St. Cyprian's which is also called the Banana Church. In order to get this, this church built, restored, I'm just telling you now, this church warden was known as Dr. Elvin Nixon, and he had married a lady from Brownstone, a new St. Mark's Church there, and decided that the church built in St. Cyprian's must be built a replica of Marx and Marx. The Archbishop said no. He called in his builders, Maze and Sant. They said the land was not suitable for such a heavy building. But Dr. Nixon said, Your Grace, if we do not have what we want as our church built in the same design as St. Mark's Brownstone, there will be no church. And the archbishop threw the papers at him and said, get out of my office and build your church yourself. I said, yes, Your Grace, we will build our church and you'll be surprised to see what we put up. And that is what they put up. The Brotherhood of St. Andrew of this church built this home for the elderly. It is one of three such houses built. 
As part of the outreach of the church, they also operate a basic school alongside the home. Sister Molly Walton is a member of the church army. She is responsible for the innovative puppet theater on the beach. She talks about the work of the church army, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary in Jamaica in 2008. Our mission takes in the children's homes because we have a church army officer who is in charge of the children's home in Chapleton, St. Monica's. We have chaplains in the hospitals. One of our officers is in Cornwall Regional and one is at the University Hospital. So we're in the chaplaincy service. We are also chaplains for high schools and prep schools and, and um, primary schools as well. So we also do prison work because currently we in the Portmore Deanery are doing an, an outreach to the prisoners at the Tamarind Farm prison. And uh, of course there's social work where we look about looking after because you cannot tell people about God if their stomach is hungry. So we do food, we get food and we do food baskets, social care for our parishioners as well. Women have always played an integral role in the development of the church. Canon Judith Daniel was one of the first women to be ordained in Jamaica and is the first woman to be appointed a canon in the diocese and in the province. Well, I think we have brought a new focus to the church. You know, we have been doing things that the men didn't want to do. Every year we have somebody for, from the women to be ordained. The sort of focus on youth ministry, very important to me. The St. Andrew Settlement, which is um, it's a whole complex of different services. Um, basic school, okay, we have about 80 basic schools throughout the country, but when you have one in a place like Majesty Gardens, it is coupled with a medical clinic, which is um, manned free of cost by doctors who belong to St. Andrew Parish Church, um, a library, community center, this type of thing. There are many styles of architecture in the churches throughout Jamaica. Canon Peter Mullings at the Church of the Ascension Mona has many an interesting tale to tell. First of all, this was or this is the first um, church expressing the new liturgical um, expression with the altar moving from the east to the center and the people sitting around. This is the first of, of um, such architecture. We have there the, the, the font, which was um, hewn out of alabaster from up at the Blue Mountains by a rastafarian. And um, so when we were thinking of a column bearer, we, we thought of the death and baptism, the Eucharist, the cross, everything in one sweep, so that um, life and life everlasting would be expressed. Amen, amen, it shall be so. Hello. The church is very proud of its history of being self-sustaining and its place in the religious and cultural heritage of Jamaica. I would say to any diocese that is short of resources, both financial and in personnel, which we are short of personnel very badly, any diocese that is short of people, I would say to them, don't give up because we can maximize what we have. <laughs>